It was one of the first optics that Trigicon made that was really just amazing. The, the ACAG really was the, the first optic. When the company was originally started, they uh, imported Armson OEG sites from South Africa. That was how Glenn Binden, our founder, got interested in, in optics and brought them to the U.S. If you could figure out a way to take like a half a binocular so that you could have the, the fixed magnification of, of that system. Many people said it would never work, but he continued to develop it. He was literally an aerospace engineer. For, um, so he, he had a, a, just a great gift for engineering and understanding how to develop product. And so yeah, so he developed the ACOG and it was tested and, and picked up by the Marines and, and the rest is sort of history. Very exciting. Yeah. So what does ACOG stand for? It's the Advanced Combat Optical Gun Sight. Very good. Yep. And uh, so there are multiple flavors out now mm -hmm. with the ACOG. Yes. And um, so tell me a little bit about how are the devices illuminated internally? Sure. So most ACOGs are uh, dual illuminated battery free with the tritium and fiber optics. So they have a fiber on the top of the scope and then they have a tritium vial inside. So in, in a lit situation, it's the fiber optic that illuminates the reticle, but in a dark situation, you still have the tritium, which is a radioactive isotope that um, illuminates the reticle inside the optics. About how long does that last for? It has a about a 12 year half life. So in 12 years, it will be half as bright. Um, so if, if for some reason, well, most people usually have their ACOGs a lifetime um, because they're indestructible and being battery free, they just never, never need to be uh, fixed or anything. So um, we can actually replace the tritium vial for folks. It's like a couple hundred dollars. You can send it in and it's, they don't know, they don't just replace the vial, they do like a complete refurbishment. So, if, you know, if you've got an old beat up ACOG and you want to send it in and get the tritium replaced, and the only thing we can't like fix is the housing. If there's dings and dents and stuff in, in the housing, but any other than that, you basically get back a new scope because they go in and they clean all the, the prism and, and refill it with the, with the nitrogen gas. And So that's really good to know. Yeah. And, and yeah. I didn't know that, so yeah. that's, that's nice for for us to be able to pass that along to customers. Sure. Yeah. Can you tell me about the internal pieces of it? Do they put any type of gases or what keeps it from becoming foggy like some other optics mm -hmm. do? Yep, they're sealed, they're nitrogen filled. That's basically what keeps them from, from fogging as well as you know the great glass that we use and the, the prism mechanism uh, as well as the coatings on the glass all help uh, make an absolute clear view when you're looking through the optic. Yeah. Perfect. And then the glass, is, is there a difference of quality of glass that's out there, you know, versus a, a generic optic versus a Trigicon? Yeah. What provides the clarity when you really look through that optic? We do use premium glass in all of our optics. So whether it's the ACOG or, you know, our, our variable scopes or reflex, we, we buy top of the line glass, use the best coatings to have the best light transmission. So you have the, the clearest view as you're looking through the optic. Perfect. So tell me a little bit about the handgun sights. So mm -hmm. I have I really found you all from the handgun sights and, mm -hmm. and ACOGs uh, as we get into the rifle systems. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the handgun optics or the, the, the sights that go on firearms, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit more, more about those? Sure, so the, the iron sights? Yes. Yeah, so the bright and tough iron sights were the initial iron sights that, that we developed, which are tritium based front and rear, and then they have a white outline. And then from there we, we developed the optic or suppressor height bright and tough sights, and then those evolved into our HD night sights, which are uh, also tritium rear and front, but then they have a photoluminescent ring just on the front, which is really nice, especially for like law enforcement because, uh, or personal protection, because um, the photoluminescent paint, if you're going from a, a bright situation into a dark situation, that photoluminescent paint will maintain its brightness for about six minutes, which gives your eyes time to adjust to the dark so that you can see the tritium. The tritium is always glowing, but if your eyes are, are adjusted to the light, you won't see it. So it gives your eyes, it gives you the aiming point while your eyes continue to adjust to the darkness. And then you have a, the aiming point with the tritium in the dark. So a really smart technology mm -hmm. to be able to help an individual transition from an outdoor environment to potentially even a dark environment. Exactly, exactly. And then the HDXRs are, are very similar. The only difference is it's got a little bit thinner front post, so you can have that extended range for shooting it at longer distances. So about 22, 23 years ago, mm -hmm. I was taking a class and it was a low light class mm -hmm. and everyone in the class had night sights except for me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand the value of a night sight. And at mm -hmm. that time I was very new to the industry. I just mm -hmm. started um, 
as a customer learning about the handguns. And um, I noticed that everyone's shooting patterns were pretty, pretty grouped. And then you got to mine, and they were pretty wide. And that's really was the evolution for me to understand what the advantage is, almost mm -hmm. a cheat, to yeah. be able to have that night sight and be able to see in a low light environment. Exactly, exactly. And now a lot of people put red dots on their pistols and, and those also, some people call it cheating, but I call it just making sure you're safe. <laughs> so you talk about red sight, red dot sights, uh -huh. um, a couple different flavors that are out there from that. Mm -hmm. um, I know you have some of those self-illuminated ones, mm -hmm. but the ones that, um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that technology. Does a light emit from something onto a piece of glass mm -hmm. or is it a self-contained light? What is that? Yeah, so it's not, a, it's not a laser. It does not project the dot. The person who the dot is aimed at does not see the dot. Only the shooter sees the dot. So depending on whether it's the um, battery-free, which is the tritium fiber, same technology as the ACOG, or the battery reflex sight, the reticle is illuminated onto the glass that the shooter sees, and then it just gives them that advantage so that they're not giving their position away by you know, pointing a laser at someone. Very good. Yeah. Now, some of those sites have adjustability and brightness. So mm -hmm. how did that come about? Right. The, it started with the RMR having uh, the, the ability to increase or decrease the illumination, the brightness of the, of the dot. And then it also has an auto adjust. So if you want it to adjust itself as you're transitioning between different lighting situations, it has that ability as well. Or you can lock in a brightness that, that you know you want a setting on, or you don't want to risk if you're carrying it in a holster, having your holster bump, bump your brightness one way or the other, you can lock in a certain brightness setting. Um, so that's really nice. Yeah, and, that's a great feature. Yeah, and that feature holds true on the SRO and the new RMR HD and RCR as well. So yeah, the family has really expanded, but one thing that holds true is the absolute durability of our optics. We've done third-party uh, crush tests, and the RMR, RMR HD both hold up to like, you know, 20,000 pounds of crush and the RCR as well, because the ears, the shape really helps deflect any type of stress away from the glass. The SRO is like the next, was like, you know, 16,000 pounds of crush. And then our next nearest competitor was like 4,000 pounds of crush. I mean, it's just night and day. So, you know, you hear people say, oh, the SRO isn't, isn't as strong as the RMR. Well, no, nothing is, <laughs> but there's not, there's nothing stronger than than either the RMR or the SRO. So they're both just great, phenomenal, robust optics. So when it comes to battery life, individuals mm -hmm. are always thinking about how often do I, should I change my batteries? Mm -hmm. And Trijicon seems, in my opinion, to have one of the longest running battery yes. lives. Yeah. Why is that? Well, because we, we pr think that your optic should always be on. We don't ever want you to have to think about turning your optic on. We don't want your optic to turn itself on or off. You know, I, people seem really enamored with shake awake right now, but we don't, we don't ever want the optic to think for you. So we put extended battery lives in our in our optics so that you don't have to think about it. Your optic can always be on and if you change your battery every year, you know, whether it's when you change your smoke alarm batteries or whenever you do annual maintenance on anything, your battery will never be dead. So it's just we just want to make sure that you have an aiming solution whenever you need it all the time. So that's a good suggestion. And so I, I always try and tell my customers Think of it as a birthday item, mm -hmm. right? So, because you always really remember when your birthday is. Sure. So, an easy thing to kind of think about changing out your batteries. When it comes to when it comes to Trijicon, mm -hmm. the the lights produced onto the glass, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you use LEDs? Do you use lasers? And how does that impact the longevity of the optic? Our engineers work really hard to make sure that we have um, the longest battery life possible. But all of our optics through a huge testing protocol to make sure that. We not only have long battery life, we have the robustness. We put them through what we call our Alaska to Africa test so to make sure that they can go from an extreme cold situation to an extreme hot situation without any internal fogging. Um, we immersion test them to make sure that they can stand up to a certain level of, of being you know, submerged, not just get out in the rain, but literally submerged. If you were in a situation where you know, your, op your firearm fell in water for you know, 10 meters, 30 meters, whatever it may be, that it would still work and hold zero and our drop and vibration test to make sure that you know whatever you put them through that we're always gonna always gonna have a great optic that doesn't fail very cool well thank you very much lynn for spending some time yeah, with us thanks. really appreciate coming out and trigicon available at c2 tactical we'll look forward to seeing you on the range